Hello, welcome to Invictus Motors. We've got this McLaren 570GT. I've reviewed a 570S in the past and this, prior to this I've reviewed another 570GT and this actually being the third 570 but the second 570 GT. I've got a bit of a soft spot for the GT variants as opposed to the 570S, purely down to the fact I, is that I find the GTs to be more of an everyday daily -able supercar in comparison to the 570S. And the main reason for that is obviously is that the suspension setup in terms of the back and the rear is slightly, I think it's about 10 to 15% softer on the GT versus the 70S. And yes, you shave a tiny bit almost two miles per hour um, off the uh, top speed if you're going to be going at a you know a ridiculous speed which I don't think really matters in the scheme of things but on paper if it was to do the 0 to 62 miles per hour as a matter of fact that is possible both in the 70s and in the GT at 3.4 seconds and the top speed equally being 204 miles per hour this is actually finished in this really gorgeous color. Overall, I think when it comes to a McLaren, you ought to have it in something like this in terms of a color. But before we can get into the nitty gritty details of the spec, what I'd like to do is to actually take you out for a drive, bring you back in, and just to kind of cover every nook and cranny, including the fact to cover the paperwork with you, and just to kind of put it out there that this is currently for sale here with us at Invictus Motors and if it's something that you're interested carry on watching the video all the way at the end but if, it's, if you're just here to watch the review perhaps just watch the next five to eight minutes. In terms of what is here uh, for the eye to see aesthetically is let me actually come to that side and open this door is is the way these dihedral doors open so for the money this is priced at £85,000, it's done about 6,000 miles. It's just the way these dihedral doors open up and I think everything from a styling point of view, both the rear and the front and the whole look, feel of it, it's to me at work that you are essentially driving around. And this look here at the back is just for me it makes me feel like I'm a movie star every time sort of I get into it or get out of the vehicle or wherever I actually drive it and a lot of people are actually surprised when they actually stop you and do ask you how much something like this is worth and I tell them in the region of anywhere so for, from 75 to 85,000 pounds. They're very much spec dependent both in terms of the color, both in terms of the mileage but yeah something like this is listed with us at 85,000 pounds. How is how is the GT different to the 70S? And one of the key criteria here is, this is before I get into the test drive aspect of it, is to actually just show you that extra 7.8 cubic meters of space that you get here in the GT. So it's all that space there, you know, all the extra luggage space, makes a world of a difference having it and 5.3 cubic meters of space at the front whereas on the 570s the only space you get is the front which is 5.2 cubic meters rather than 5.3 so a little bit more space here in the gt versus the 70s so let's just actually get on the road take it out for a spin and then bring it back in for the spec review it's always nice to actually get inside a McLaren and seeing the, the, the dihedral doors sort of pop open really is a nice thing to experience. Now getting onto the inside is a whole load of drama as well but once again it's actually very enjoyable getting into the inside of this and just feeling like you're getting in an absolute mega expensive in terms of a car talking about mega expensive i think if mum if memory serves me correctly these were close to 200,000 pounds when they were brand new i still remember in around 2018 or was it 2019 seeing one of these drive drive past by me and i i told myself one day and that one day has indeed come and this is not the first one, having had quite a few now, the third one to be precise. The first one was the 570S and then two GTs subsequent to that. 
and these cars have been nothing but really really good to us so far and I'm very pleased with actually the overall build quality the drivability and everything that comes with the McLaren we haven't found it difficult to source you know a Capart for example in the past had a starter motor fail or an alternator and you know they, they weren't overly expensive I, I think when you compare it to the brands like Porsche they were in line with what to be expected from those sort of cars and those obviously items partly sometimes those things will fail purely because of the way somebody is actually taking care of one of these cars starter motor I mean it, it, uh, the only reason I could think of a starter motor failing as a matter of fact is you know even the owner's manual clearly indicates to switch off the stop start button uh, and all you do is simply press it um, and the old McLaren owner's manual will actually recommend that as long as you keep it on trickle charge when you're not driving it that battery is an incredibly resilient battery now in terms of the transmission in this this has the seven speed SSG transmission it's a dual clutch gearbox very similar to what you would expect in the PDK gearboxes engine wise this has the 3.8 litre turbocharged engine in this and it sounds incredible and you know you you would sometimes actually at low speed confuse it with a naturally aspirated engine and out of that 3.8 litre turbocharged engine you know you get 562 brake horsepower 600 newton meters of torque a top speed of 204 miles per hour and the not to 62 miles per hour possible in a blisteringly quick 3.4 seconds I sometimes get asked you know is it a, a difficult car to drive is it a difficult car to handle not at all people are absolutely shocked and amazed at how comfortable it is and what a usable car it is as a matter of fact and that is something that surprised me initially when I drove one of these and it surprised every single one of our customers that have actually bought the previous two McLarens that we've had in stock one actually just goes through how comfortable the steering feels and then also if you've got to reverse in a tight space also got a rear view camera this is probably not the best time to take one of these out for a drive with the amount of traffic that we're in but at the same time it's important to actually illustrate that this is a very easy car to handle and a very easy car to drive and I'd love to be putting my foot down and really taking it through its paces as a matter of fact that is something I will actually leave for another video because this is one of those cars that I'd like to definitely revisit and review one more time and the main reason for that is is because I'm a bit low on fuel and I don't like to drive a car to its full potential or even to 70% of its potential unless I have a sufficient amount of fuel It's nice to relax and enjoy going through this phase of driving it at 
the speeds that normally normally that people would drive from an everyday perspective and certainly a car of this caliber speaks for itself in terms of the way it looks and the video should have hopefully done it some justice to show that the steering wheel is easy to work through and just get a good comfortable feel for it and going to put it in reverse rear view camera turns on pretty efficiently put it in drive and we'll go through this one more time back to the dealership We're back from our test drive. What do we have here spec-wise? You have obviously got this front 5.3 cubic meters worth of space at the front and then 7.8 at the back, which I'll go through. But what's really stunning and what really stands out on this is obviously the Vermilion Elite Red metallic paint color. And it is stunning and incredibly rare. And also I love the palladium, sort of the dark gray palladium uh, front splitter. And then you obviously have that running through the side of the doors, especially that door and the side skirts. And then you've got the GT branding there. And I'll sort of quickly welcome you into the inside. It's just the flat bottom steering wheel. It's got cruise control, the hydraulic front nose lift, as well as you've got the Bluetooth connectivity and the navigation system there. And you've got all the various sports button, including being able to put it in, in track mode right here. And obviously you've got the launch function and it's got the high end sound system, which is the Bauer Wilkinson sound system. And let me actually just show you the back of these seats. And this just kind of speaks for itself. Um, finished in almost this, this dark carbon black uh, look to the back of these seats with the, it's actually not beige interior, it's called Araya, so A-R-E-I-A. -E so yeah, let's just call it beige with the uh, Napa black leather interior. And I love the fact that even on the steering wheel, the little attention to detail where you find the stitching on the steering wheel in that beige color. And obviously you've got the red McLaren uh, badge right in the middle um, with it having that carbon surround. And I think I already mentioned the high-end Bauer and Wilkinson sound system. So this is um, just obviously uh, on some of the spec items here. But the other bigger change is, which I absolutely am in awe of the 570 GT, is the fact it's got this glass roof there, as opposed to it just being sort of blacked out in the uh, 70S, the 570S. Uh, and doesn't it kind of makes it like a, a dark and um, and almost like an undesirable cabin space to be in. Whereas in the GT, there's a lot of light, especially with an interior like this. It makes you feel like you are in in a beautifully well lit, well spaced air airship or airspace. And then you come to the back, and you've got another 7.8 liter cubic meters of space right there. Loads of space, and this is obviously the dark palladium. Um, even that front tail uh, just looks stunning. It's a work of art when you're driving it and then you've got the sports exhaust finished in um, stainless steel look and that really aggressive diffuser right there at the back. And in terms of if you're wondering what sort of alloys it has, this probably by far has my favorite alloys, which are the 15 spoke McLaren alloys. They're staggered, so 19 inch at the front and uh, 20 inch at the back. That's everything from a spec point of view. I'm sure there are loads of uh, other spec items that I may have missed, but this is obviously a, in terms of a summary as best as I can capture. Let me show you the rest of the paperwork in terms of the service history because this really is a car to buy. Despite it having only done about circa 6,000 miles, it's actually been serviced every single year. And just to kind of like take you through the service history here, the first service was done at 333 miles, and that was in 2017. Then the next service after that was done in 2018 at 595 miles, the third one at 691 miles, and these were all done at McLaren. And then it's 
2020, fourth service at 1,109 miles, fifth year 1,576 miles, and then two subsequent services, as a matter of fact, done with us, one at 2,354 miles and then at 6,342 miles. And just in terms of the owner's history, he's got three former keepers, which is right here on the V5. And then I've got some invoices showing some of the works, or major ticket item works that it has had done at McLaren's. And there are some works done in relation to the uh, transmission system having uh, having its its big ticket service that's coming at about eight thousand um, pounds and that's where they've had the obviously the, the the clutch and oil cooler replaced quite a few big ticket items being carried out uh, from a maintenance side of things mclaren's are not what actually people make them out to be uh, that they are like maintenance heavy as long as you look after them you service them every year and you know if something is due on it that it's done and you actually take care of it and maintain it it will look after you in terms of a minor service they're about 450 pounds plus VAT and a major service I think it's about 800 pounds plus VAT at a good renowned McLaren specialists and we actually work with one so happy to uh, sort of have that relationship between you and that McLaren specialist. Uh, or alternatively, you can always have it serviced with us. We have an in-house technicians. We do things like Porsches, Ferraris, and now McLarens. This is, as I said, the third one we have had in a very short space of time. A very easy product to work on, uh, as a matter of fact. And we've had it all stripped where the wheels have come off, the front bonnet to change the battery on another McLaren. And ultimately, they are quite easy to work on. But obviously the, the brand and the name makes you feel as if they could be quite costly and expensive to work on. I hope you watched, I hope you've liked the video. Please don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, leave some feedback and see you next time. Bye bye.